I can't even draw a stick man. Greetings collectors, followers and friends. Tom Hughes here with some more thoughts on painting via a mountain bike in the Welsh Valleys. I've, uh, I've just dropped my paintings off at the Albany Gallery in Cardiff for a group show that starts on the 2nd of June. And I thought while I'm here, it would be silly not to take advantage of being in Wales. So I've come up here to Cum Khan to do a bit of painting accessed by bike. Now, I haven't been here for about, God, maybe 15 years. Can't be that long, maybe it is. What I remember from it is that it's very steep and quite rocky. And hopefully we're gonna get some views. Find something nice to paint. I'm really on the clock today. I have to get back to Bristol to pick my kids up from school and take my son swimming for four o'clock. So I only got time for one painting and I might not even have time to finish one painting. So we'll see what happens. It's a beautiful sunny day. Always nice to be in the woods. I've been managing to get out on my bike a lot recently, which uh, improves my mood no end, being an obsessive cyclist, doing some big rides every Saturday morning and taking my kid out in the woods after school to burn off some of his extra energy. Haven't done plein air painting in a while. So, a bit out of practice. I hope this goes well. All right. This is steep and rocky and I've got a lot of weight on the bike but it is very beautiful. Well, this is a, a natural place to have a little rest. Um, I've got the both pannier bags on today, with all my painting gear in, and some food, water and toolkit, and navigation up on there. So the bike's pretty heavy today and I'm feeling every kilo on these climbs, but it is very, very beautiful here in the woods, especially. Um, when we get to the top, I'm hoping there's gonna be some views. And then when we see one that really grabs us, grabs me, I'll set up and we'll do a painting. Well, I'm at the top but there's no view. I mean, like, that's the view. The 
tiny little gap in the trees. So I might go around that bend and just have a little look or carry on down here and hope there's something. <laughs> if not, I'm just going to have to paint a pine tree. Oh! That's rather nice. You can see to back to Bristol from here. That's pretty cool. If we just keep going around the corner, I think I think we might get something. So this is a pretty cool spot. It is tempting to uh, to sit here. My gut is still telling me there's something better though. Could be wrong. It's a risk. It's a risk to continue. Am I going to get better than that? I'm not sure I am. There's a rock there that I could sit on. Okay, this is it. This is it. It has to be here. Right, a little bit of lunch. I've got my little uh, packet of bacon sandwiches. Well, I'm glad I, I'm glad I held off then. That was the the right thing to do. I've only got time to do one painting, and once you've gone down, I can't really go back up again because I haven't got time. So, the further I get to the end of the trail, the more I risk not finding any spot at all. But um, I've got like a foreground, midground, background, water, and a far horizon sky, urban area, river, this is enough. There's enough variety so I think, well, I think we'll have a bacon sandwich and then get cracking. So this um, tripod, mini tripod setup, it does seem to really work. You know it sort of, it, it floats above my, it floats above my knees which I'm very happy about. This is way, way lighter than my 12 by 10 box. Uh, yeah, should be good. Right, now I appreciate that you can't see the view as well as my painting, but I'm afraid that's just the way it's gonna be, the way it has to be. Look at all my little lovely colors. Right. What are we going to capture of this? Yeah, so it was very um, satisfying to get those uh, instructional tuition videos done, those 10. That sort of best of thoughts on painting. It was a very, um, it was a very intense couple of weeks getting those, getting those made but satisfying. It sort of put a nice, tied a nice little bow around that period of my life when I was painting plein air all the time. When I, um, I've probably spoken about this before, but when I started, when I started painting, I decided for the first five years, at least, but definitely the first five years, I was gonna paint everything from life, be it on location doing plein air or in the studio painting still life. And I stuck to it absolutely religiously and and did it and I was proud of myself for that and it taught me well, it taught me everything I know about painting I think all the foundationals certainly it was extremely helpful um, invaluable experience but as I've probably said before, there's 
Painting from Life and Plan Air is really good for some things and it's not so good for other things. So as time went on, I began to began to want to experiment in the studio where the time the time limit just wasn't a factor. I didn't have to worry about the sun going in or shadows moving or what the weather was going to be when I'd organised a trip and all of that stuff. I just wanted to press stop on the clock and sit in the studio and really think and plan because it's a very different way of working. Plan Air is absolutely an experience. Um, I think that's like the main draw really, it's the whole thing. It's the, the night before thinking where am I going to go or the week before you're sort of planning it then you're looking forward to it and uh, you get to it's, it's, I, I see it very intertwined with cycling actually very similar look at a map get your gear ready get your bike ready get your painting box ready what size boards are you going to take all that sort of stuff it's really fun you have that nervous excitement of an adventure's coming and I don't know what's going to happen but something is and, I'm, and it's going to be exciting that is such a cool feeling and um, I get very I get sort of very sort of grumpy and down if I don't feel that much I have to have this sense that something amazing could potentially happen right round the corner and planning a trip uh, seems to provide that I mean the, the, you know this is this is great fun and it's something I sort of wanted to do for a, a month or so but I'm so caught up doing other things trying to make money with the ki uh, you know dealing with the kids picking them up from school all that sort of stuff life's so busy <clears throat> and I'm actually thinking about I'm thinking about narrative a lot more these days. I feel that that's where my focus is in regards to painting. I feel like my days of just rendering something in front of me to look like the thing that I'm looking at. The learning curve has flattened out and I I can't remember the last time I felt I went out and had like a breakthrough. And I used to absolutely live for those moments. Like literally. So exciting to have a breakthrough and I don't feel like I've had one for a very long time. So in order to get that feeling of progress, and uh, exploration and potential breakthrough into something else. I have to do different things. And in my head, it feels like exploring narrative somehow, creating some sort of narrative in a painting would be a good way to do it. I may not even show what I'm doing might all just be personal work that never sees the light of day. Wales is a funny old place. I spent a lot of time here. Uh, 
I know it's midweek, but I haven't seen another person all afternoon. I dropped my paintings off at the, uh, at the Albany Gallery in Cardiff and then hopped in the car and drove up here. And I haven't seen another, <clears throat> another person. No one on the trail. No one in the car park. Oh, there was a car, but I didn't see a... I didn't see a person. It's a very quiet place, generally. Which I like. Oil paint moves so nicely on warm days, it just flows, which is great. Ants crawling up my legs, I can feel them. Get off! Doesn't hurt, it just tickles. <clears throat> I need to do some um, to do some advertising for my uh, painting videos. I need to get the word out more. They exist. It's quite an eye-opening thing, actually, doing them because when I was narrating them, I was, you know, obviously talking about the things I was doing as I was doing them from a technical perspective. And it's only when you start doing that sometimes that you sort of have a realisation as you're describing something and you can sort of have a realisation for the first time even when describing what you were doing on a video that's two or three years old. There's something about vocalising a thought that I think accesses different parts of the brain. So I think if you're trying to think through a particularly different problem, a difficult problem, I wouldn't be surprised if thinking out loud actually helped, helped you solve the problem. I do think there's some it's a different circuit in the brain, maybe. When you engage your, your verbal part. You get access to different, different circuits and routes and then different solutions. I've found that when I've been teaching as well. I'll be trying to describe how to do something to someone and I'll suddenly say something sort of unique that I've never said before. And it will sound like sort of just some knowledge I'm passing on that I've had for ages, but so, you know, sometimes it is just brand new. Quite tricky to get a uh, bright green at sort of mid distance.
breaking a lot of my rules here. I normally start with the furthest thing away and paint towards me, but Sometimes I think it's good to mix things up. Something different might happen. It's amazing that the sun has now come out. I was getting very, shall we say, uptight <laughs> about the lack of sun and this just this endless sort of cold snap that spring seemed to be stuck in. It's driving me bonkers. When you compare it to the spring we had 2020 during lockdown, good grief. That was something else. But it does seem to be finally here now, and this week especially is really nice. A bit hard to see the palette. I'm getting some glare just because of the angle it is. The angle it's at. Right, I'm mixing up some slightly crazy colors. most accurate painting. I'm very pleased with this little box. My little 9x7 Porchard box creation. It's really fun to. It seems to be warmer. To, uh, I find it really fun just to make things with a, a saw, a bit of glue and some clamps and just, you know, not, not plan it out too much, just sort of make it on the fly. Really fun. And you get exactly what you want, of course. I looked long and hard actually for a uh, 9x7 painting box that was sort of super light. But they're really expensive and they're all, I think they're all too big. Especially if you're like me and you want to access your painting spots by bike. Weight is really sort of crucial uh, part of the design brief. Always really satisfying to put in a horizon line. That cool colour. I see everyone on social media posting about whether they got into the RA or not. I haven't, I haven't tried, I can't remember the last time I entered the RA. I've been in three times, I think, 
but that was back when I entered absolutely everything every year. Uh, when I first started, I thought the best way to sort of try and get my work seen was just to enter as many competitions as possible. Which is, it was, it was good actually. Got quite a bit of exposure, got to go to the IRA and the BP Portrait Award and the Mall Galleries a lot. Um, and then it just stopped being important to me and I stopped sending my work in. And now I don't enter anything really. Oh, the Bar Society of Artists, that was, uh, I'm a member of that though, so. Oops. I've got some work in there at the moment. A lot closer to Bristol than the more Galleries is. The Victoria Art Gallery in Bath. I was thinking on the ride up, like when you try and pick the bike up with all the bags and everything, it's like, oh wow, that's pretty heavy. But then when you're actually riding it, you can't, you can't really feel that weight. Bikes are sort of quite remarkable machines in that regard. You can lug all this stuff around. And they're really, really efficient. I absolutely adore bikes. And I try and ride as much as I can. And I'm actually going to ride the um, the width of Wales from uh, east to west next weekend with a friend. I think it's 106 miles or something. It's called the Trans, yeah, the Trans Cambrian route. And me and a friend, good friend, are going to do that on our bikes. We're not actually sleeping out under the stars like I normally would, uh, because you have to take quite a bit of stuff in order to do that. So we're going to ride a bit lighter, I think, and um, we're going to stay in B and Bs. But I am beyond excited about that. It's something I think about all the time, like bike packing. Uh, and it's been like that for many years. Just sort of, there's nothing I'd sort of rather be doing with my personal spare time, I think. I used to do a lot of snowboarding when I was younger, in my 20s, but it's not practical to do now. I've got a family, so bikepacking is actually an excellent substitute. Plus the fact that I'm 43 and my body doesn't work like it did when I was 23. As I'm sure a lot of you can appreciate. Be interested to know actually what my youngest my youngest viewer is here on Thoughts on Painting. If you're in your early 20s can you let me know in the comments Uh, because I'm increasingly feeling <laughs> like an irrelevant middle-aged person and it would be heartening to know that there was a young person out there that was sort of getting value from what I was doing. I'd really like to know that. That'd be good. So yeah, if you are out there, say hi. <laughs> I'm not ready to disappear into 
obscurity and games of bridge and biscuits just yet. No offence to any bridge fans out there at all. I'm just saying there is a time of life for everything. I'm not quite there yet. Yeah, I think middle age. I don't know, what is middle age? 45 to 65? Because that sort of creeps up on you. Suddenly you think, oh God. I'm sort of, I'm halfway. If I make it to 90, which, you know, who knows? Is a bit of a worry. And you do start to get more random. I've got to cover my leg up so it doesn't get sunburnt. You do start to get more random pains. <laughs> you just do. And I don't know where they come from. I've started doing um, deliberate cold exposure, which is just a fancy word for cold showers. I started, I actually, <laughs> well, I did a week of cold showers, increasing the time by sort of 20 seconds every day, sort of starting with sort of 30 seconds, ending up to a minute, and then sort of topped out at three minutes. And then I started putting sort of six pints of ice water in the freezer at night. And then I was having um, ice baths every morning for three minutes and my God, you, you don't even know what your own name is after three minutes in an ice bath. It is, <laughs> let's be honest, it's deeply unpleasant, but the purported health benefits fascinate me and it seems that there is nothing, there's no other protocol, let's say, health protocol that you can do that gives as much health benefits for as little effort as sitting in a bath of ice seems to do. So. I thought, well, that's a really easy win. I'll take that. Um, I was actually getting, I was actually waking up on the hour, every hour, uh, all night with, <laughs> with like anxiety dreams about the impending ice bath the next morning. So, one of the benefits of ice baths is supposed to sort of help, you know, set your rhythm, your body rhythms better and help you sleep better. But it wasn't having that effect. I was, my, it was sort of, my body was priming itself for the incoming trauma of submerging itself in, in ice water. And that a sort of adrenaline in my subconscious or whatever was um, was waking me up like all through the night. And I thought, well, this is stupid. This is counterproductive. So I stopped doing the ice baths and I switched to just cold showers, uh, which isn't quite cold enough, but as with all things, health and fitness, I believe consistency uh, beats everything. So what, you're going to force yourself to do one ice bath every fortnight maybe, or you're going to have a cold shower every single day without fail. I'll take the cold shower. I think that's more effective. I think consistency, regularity is always best. 
So that's what I'm doing now. Three minute cold shower every morning. And apparently if you air dry, so you jump out, wrap a towel around, you still soaking wet, hair soaking wet, and you sort of, you know, wander off around the house and do your thing, make your breakfast, get the kids ready, uh, and you let yourself air dry, um, that is even more health benefits because you're forcing your body to heat itself up. Um, and if you start shivering, that uh, I think it metabolizes brown fat or something. It's all in the Andrew Huberman podcast, Deliberate Cold Exposure, if you're interested. If you're not, I apologize for wasting the last 10 minutes of your life. But yeah, I love it. I love it. It makes me feel really good. A cold shower in the morning. Really good. Really sort of mental, really good mental focus and clarity. Look at this bug. Get out of it. Um, and who doesn't, who doesn't want a bit of mental clarity? And I've started to, uh, I think I've got some friends into it. My, I've got my neighbours into it. It's not a sort of dedicated Wim Hof method. But, um, you know, I'm sure it's almost identical to a lot of stuff he does. I saw on YouTube a video of him. It was something like his 61st birthday or 63rd or something. So to celebrate, he had a 61 or whatever minute ice bath to match his years. Which I cannot, I can't even fathom how unpleasant that must have been. It's kind of extraordinary that he can do that, but there you go. He's um, he's adapted and hardened himself to it over the years. And he's got a mind of iron as well, I think. Not a lot of... I'm worried about the depth here. I think it, I'm missing something. sort of halo effect that you get around trees when the lights are coming from above reloading it's a bit better a bit more personality and then these ones do they need to go darker? Yeah, I don't paint many um, just, you know, straight up landscapes. Not really. They're either coastal scenes or uh, city scenes. And it's weird because I love nature. I love being outside. All this, you know, being out here is just magic. But for some reason, like visually, I don't feel as much of an urge to translate these sorts of views into oil paintings like I do 
with other um, subject matter. I sometimes think, oh, maybe it would be uh, easier to sell paintings if I if I stuck more to um, to landscapes. But you know, you paint what you want to paint. So I think we do need a bit of a bit more detail up here. So there's what's going on out here. Some uh, whoops. Where's my Uber ruler? I made this sort of small one with a <laughs> rope that on with marker pen. This is like some sort of, this is very sort of South Walesy, this sort of industrial port area on the horizon. Reminds me of Port Talbot. It's not Port Talbot, but reminds me a bit of that. Uh, I'm not sure if I said we're at Kum Khan. A little bit of pink for those houses down there. is not that far from where I went to university in Swansea and I wish I'd come up here with my bike back then but for some reason I don't know what it is about well I can only speak from my personal experience when I think back about all the opportunities that I sort of potentially missed as a young person oh it makes me makes me sort of rage at myself for not doing so many things that if I had the time back I would absolutely do now but when you're younger I think things aren't as obvious you don't see the world as clearly as adults and you do miss out on things bit of contrast going on here. Some areas of this hill I think need to be more shadowed. Some dynamics, dark against light, lighted against dark and all that. What time is it? Okay, probably got 15 minutes more painting and then should probably start packing up. That's enough time. We're nearly finished. So this is, this is okay. This is all right as a study of uh, this view. 
sort of does the job. A bit more sun there. A bit more there. Careful not to enter the realm of sentimental cheese with the old sunspots and ah, the heavens parting, but I think it did need something. A few little balancing strokes. Wow, that sun on my, on my leg is cooking. When I was a kid, I burned better than anyone I think I'd ever met. We would get to a beach or something on holiday and my mum would say, put some cream on and I would just run. I'd just run down to the beach and then, you know, come back an hour later obviously burnt to a crisp but couldn't quite see it yet and then by late afternoon early evening I looked sometimes like I sort of should have been hospitalized <laughs> and it felt like that as well in hindsight I can't believe how stupid I was to get that burnt you know that that badly that many times um, but I did every single holiday it's crazy it's so bad for you so I'm really careful now and I just wear factor 50 wasn't my mum's fault. I literally ran away. Okay, we're nearly there. I can feel it. What does it need? What does it need? That's what we're looking at. Maybe a little bit more, a bit more sparklies down in the town. Oh, that's a lovely breeze. So, I feel the urge to sign it right away. Use. Um, ah. There's some small little hut. Uh. 
and then also some sort of telegraph poles. I think that's probably enough. I don't want to do anything else to ruin it. So I think we'll leave it there, clamp it on, and pack up so we can get to that swimming lesson. Right, there we go. That was really fun, really fun. Ah, oh, there's loads of people here now. See you next time. <laughs>